So today we're looking at number 16 and number 17 from Giuliani's 120 right hand studies or right hand arpeggios. And follow the lesson for free. We'll be talking about some fingering um, issues and, and other techniques. Uh, but if you're interested, all 120 studies are in my technique book. Um, but they're in most technique books. You probably already have them. Um, but also in my book is 100 open string exercises that I have students do before they attempt these. So first, let's just dive in. Um, but like I said, in my book, I have, a, you know, there's a 100 open string exercises. So it's really good to have some previous training in your hands uh, before you attempt all these Giuliani arpeggios, because some of them are a little bit um, challenging. I'd also recommend that, of course, you start from the beginning. So watch all my videos from, from arpeggio number one, you know, onward, because I talk a lot about how to practice the arpeggios, but I'm not going to repeat myself over and over as I go through all of them. So make sure you've worked on all of them up to this point. Make sure you've also watched my full video on how to practice these arpeggios, including all the information about right hand planting and preparation, a very important technique uh, for these arpeggios. And there's a link for that lesson as well in the description. So number 16, let me just play it for you first. So in this particular arpeggio, it's a nice full finger workout. It uses, utilizes a lot of the fingers. And also there's a bass note rest um, on the second and fourth beat of each measure. So it's a really good opportunity to work on your thumb muting here and syncing it up with the placement of, of the finger that's played on that beat. So sometimes it's really helpful just to play up to the rest. So you want to synchronize the playing of the A finger with the muting of the thumb by just placing the thumb back on the string. So that's, that's one technique that you can work on in this piece. Um, it's a great little arpeggio pattern too because the A finger kind of expands, right? Like at first it's pretty compact, but then it has to be on a higher string on the next beat. Besides that, there's not too much to talk about. It's a pretty straightforward arpeggio pattern. P, M, I, A, M, I, P, M, I, A, M, I. So same pattern both times, but just that little string change and the muting technique. Number 17 has a little bit more that we can talk about. Let me play it for you first. Now, in the original, um, he does have a B at the end, the last, you know, at, at the end of the second measure. He actually has a B there. Not sure if that's a misprint or not. You know, on every other arpeggio, he just keeps the chord shape the same. So I think it would be, I think it's just a misprint in the original um, publication. Um, I've written it as B, but by all means, just hold your finger down on D the entire time in that second measure. Um, I, every other version of all these arpeggios has just the same chord the whole time. So if that was confusing for you, um, you can check that out. Um, it, it's really up to you. Most publishers do publish the B, just in case that's what Giuliani wanted. But really, I, I think you can just hold it down. Or do it both ways. It's good practice. So this is a bit of an oddity pattern because we have a, a triplet figure. You know, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. But our right hand pattern is, is a duple pattern, right? It's P-I-P-I-P-I. -I -I -I. So you want to make sure, it can be a little bit confusing at first, but you want to make sure that the groups of three come out very clearly. Here, 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 here. Or one, two, three, four. One, two, three. 
it's a little bit confusing because it, even the musical pattern sounds a little bit like groups of two because you get that bass note coming in. Nevertheless, make sure you bring out the, the basic pulse of 4-4 four, four time here. So four be triplet beats per measure. Um, what that means in terms of the accents in the right hand is that it's going to be P, I, P, I, P, I, P, I. So the accent will shift between P and I every, you know, every triplet pat, a group. That can be a little bit confusing to students. Uh, what I'll say is this, is just practice it in small chunks. Just go up to there, right? Go up to your destination. So P, I, or P, I, P, I. Just go up to the next beat. And when you feel comfortable with that, do two beats. And when you feel comfortable with that, do another beat. It's really good to go up to that destination because it teaches you what finger is landing on the beat, right? And then you can start progressing through the whole thing. But it takes a little while to get used to. I think it's really important to play this arpeggio pattern. You might you might hate it and you might want to skip it, but it's really, really an important one because this happens in music all the time where the fingering pattern doesn't specific, doesn't, it kind of clashes with the musical accent pattern, but it's up to you to make sure that the musical accents are correct. Your hand is just, you know, the, the fingering that you choose sometimes is just a, it's just a technical way of executing the music uh, on the instrument, but from a musical perspective, you want to make sure that the music is correct and that your technique is just allowing you to create the music the way that it should be. You do not want a situation where your th your hand is, is deciding um, how, how the music sounds. You don't want your technique to decide how the music sounds. You want the music to be the way it is and your technique to produce the music that you want. Uh, so the patterns like this are just so important because uh, they make us reorganize our brain and make sure that we accent um, the rhythmic pulse properly.